Looks like we're recording. <laughs> Just checking. I think you're supposed to say action. Action. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Mike Pock with Three Peaks Photography. No, I'm not going skiing. I'm going to explain why I have my ski goggles with me today, but I'm here to photograph the sun with my Nisi solar filter. Now this filter is essentially a 16.6 .6 neutral density filter, but it's important to note, this is not just a neutral density filter. It is a neutral density filter with IR and UV protection. So you can't just take a regular neutral density filter or stack a 10 and a 6 and photograph the sun. You need the IR and the UV protection in order to maintain the safety of your camera. So without that protection, you will fry your camera. I'm using my Canon 5D Mark IV and my Canon 100 to 400 zoom. I, if I want to, can also add my 1.4 extender if I want to get a bit closer to the sun. So one of the reasons that it's good to use this camera is because it has a larger sensor. I know I'm gonna have to crop in the images. So if you have a camera with a larger sensor, it might be a good choice for you or uh, even a longer lens. So it's recommended to go up to about 600 millimeters. Um, one of the problems that you're going to be faced with if you're photographing the solar eclipse is that the sun is going to be moving across the sky. So you're gonna to have to adjust your tripod head and the position of the camera to keep the sun in the frame. I also have a geared head, which I'll show you in a little bit, and that might be a really good choice for photographing the sun, so I can just adjust those knobs and make sure that the sun is in alignment with the camera. So what I have to do before I put the filter on is, uh, because this is an 82 millimeter filter, I have a 77 millimeter threads at the end of the lens. I have a 77 to 82 step up ring adapter. So that goes on here first. Sorry, I was just distracted by the birds that flew by. So that goes on first on the front of the lens. And then the filter goes on. I normally like to use my hood, especially, or I always use my hoods, but I especially like to use my hood with this particular lens uh, because this filter is a little bit wider. Uh, it's challenging to do that. I can put the hood on first and screw the filter on. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm not gonna do that for the purposes of this video. Another thing to note when you're putting filters on is to only tighten them until they stop. Do not crank on them. That includes adapter rings. If you crank on them and tighten them really hard, you're not gonna get them out. So just be careful with that. All right, so I'm ready to go. And one of the important things about photographing the sun is that you don't want to look directly into it. So that's why I have my ski goggles. These have a very dark lens and these goggles fit over my glasses so they're really cool. And I can look directly into the sun without having to squint. So that's really cool. Uh, another thing is that when you're lining up the camera with the sun, you want to make sure that you're looking through the live view. You don't want to be putting the viewfinder up to your eye because uh, that could damage your eye. So make sure that you are looking at your live view. And let's see, I'm going to try not to trip on anything here and get a closer look at my goggles. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up, turn on my live view, 
It also does help to have a hat so that you can block the sun that way. Turn on my live view and I am going to adjust the camera position so that I get the sun in here. I'm going to zoom in. And one thing you might find challenging is actually focusing. So let's see how well this does. Oh, I heard a beep. And another thing that's really important, and I'll show you the histogram for this photo later, but what you want to do is you want to adjust your exposure so that you don't get any clipping in your histogram. If you don't have any clipping in the highlights, that means that you'll be able to see detail like sunspots on the sun, and then you'll also have, with this particular filter, the orangey color of the sun instead of it just looking black and white. Okay, so I think I'm gonna grab my hat before I go any further and then we'll set up to take a picture. Okay, so once you have your camera focused or your lens focused, then I recommend that you flip the switch from autofocus to manual, that way the lens doesn't have to keep searching and then you're ready to start shooting. So I'm gonna take a test shot here. I have my aperture set at f8 and my ISO currently at, is at 200. And I am going to switch over to manual to make this a little bit easier. All right, so I'm skipping the goggles for now so I can see the back of my camera a little bit better but the visor on the hat is really helping me to keep the glare off of my face. And so what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my exposure settings to the point where I'm on manual to the point where I get my exposure value at zero. And so right now I'm at F16, ISO 800, and 1 15th of a second. And I'm gonna take a shot here and I see that I do have a considerable amount of clipping in my highlights. So I'm gonna take my shutter time and change my shutter value. Now I'm going up to one one hundredth of a second. See what that does, still clipped. So let's keep going. All right, so let's see, what do we have here now? At one two fifth of a, of a second, I am still clipped in the highlights. Let's go to one one four hundred or one four hundredth of a second. All right, at one four hundredth of a second, my um, histogram has shifted off of the right hand side. I can go down a little bit if I want. Let's try 1, 3, 20. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm at 1, 320th of a second, F16, and ISO 800. All right, so if you don't want to have that higher ISO, you can adjust your settings. I really do want to have a faster shutter speed because we're moving pretty fast uh, throughout the universe and you know it's a little bit windy out here today so I want to try to make sure that I eliminate any sort of camera movement or blur that would be induced by a slower shutter speed so what I've come up with is this combination 1 400th of a second f8 and ISO 200 and if I take a shot here uh, my histogram looks really good. Adjust your settings until you get that histogram off of the right hand side. That's going to mean that you don't have a blown out sun and that you're going to be able to see some detail in it and uh, play around with what you want. If you have a live histogram on a mirrorless camera, this procedure is a whole lot easier. So just adjust your settings until that histogram 
nudges off of that right hand side and I'm going to show you what that histogram looks like a little bit later in the video when we get to take a look at these photos on my computer. So again if you're out for the solar eclipse have fun. If you're interested in one of these filters by Nisi give me a shout and we'll hook you up and they've got some great packages right now including step up rings and also some really nice holders which i forgot to bring with me <laughs> uh, all right i think that's it thank you okay let's take a closer look at some of the equipment i was using plus that geared head i mentioned earlier in the video this is a three-way geared head by Benro, and this is available through Move Shoot Move, and I will include my Move Shoot Move discount of 5% in the comment section. This allows us to adjust the camera along all three axes, so this should make things pretty easy if we're following the sun as it is tracking across the sky. So this knob adjusts the declination, this knob adjusts the side to side, and this knob adjusts the horizontal level. There's a Arca Swiss type plate that fits on the top here, and that goes onto the bottom of your camera. Here is my solar filter from Nisi. These are available through me, so if you would like to have one, please let me know. So this is an 82 millimeter and I have the 77 to 82 step up ring because the lens I was using has 77 millimeter diameter threads on the front. This is the 1.4 teleconverter that I mentioned I could have used between the camera body and the lens to extend my focal length on the 100 to 400 to get closer to the sun. And then this is the really cool case that came with the Nisi package that I ordered that included the filter and the step up ring. And it has a nice little carabiner on here so you can clip it to your bag or backpack. And then I can fit eight filters in here. So these will slide in here very easily. And then I can transport them, carry them around very safely. Okay, let's take a look at some of the photos that I shot with the solar filter and my 100 to 400 millimeter lens. I'm in camera raw right now. You have the same tools in Lightroom and this big red spot where the sun is, is there because I have my highlight clipping warning on. So if I uncheck that, you'll see the brightness of the sun there. The clipping warning shows me that my sun is overexposed. And if we look at the histogram up in the upper right hand corner, you can see this big line right here and it is touching the right hand side. That means my sun is blown out and I don't have any detail in that area. So as I was mentioning in the video, I kept adjusting my settings Right here I'm at 1 one hundredth of a second. Now I'm at 1 five hundredth of a second. And look what happened. That clipping warning went away and my histogram shifted a little bit to the left. So now you can see this little bump right here just to the left of the right hand edge. That means I don't have clipping and my sun isn't blown out. So I have detail in this area. Let me just take a look at a few others. Then I went back to 1 250th of a second and you can see I have this little spike just on the edge of the histogram and I'm still not clipped. So that clipping warning is not coming on so I still have detail in this sun. This is at 1 400th of a second, 1 320. So this was the one that I thought while shooting gave me my best option and then here's one um, where I changed the aperture and the ISO went down to a lower ISO and you can see that little bump right in here so this one's a little bit underexposed 
and then this one is better you can see that bump now shifted a bit to the right but still not clipped the rest of them i believe are at the same settings iso 200 uh, my 100 to 400 lens at 400 millimeters f8 and 1 400th of a second so as i mentioned even with this lens i'm going to have to crop considerably in order to get some photos that i want to show but if i zoom in here you start to see the sunspots everywhere and if i do a little bit of adjustment let's see ooh, let's take the highlights down just a little bit and now you can start seeing those sunspots and bringing up the whites a little bit there we go that looks pretty good maybe a little bit add a little bit of color with some vibrance and there you have it it's not that difficult the most important thing for you is to make sure that you do not look into the sun directly without any eye protection and earlier in the video i gave you a look at that benro three-way geared head and i think that would be a great solution to keeping the sun in the center of the frame as it tracks across the sky so if you're going out to photograph the sun or the solar eclipse have fun be safe and let us see your photos i do that backwards i think i did I'll be cutting this part out. <laughs>